happened before. What's going on there? Hey guys, am I live right now? I was just disconnected. That's weird. Weird. This is the topic I chose and I got disconnected. Throw down. All right, cool. Can you guys see me real quick? Throw out a, a thumbs up or a hands emoji so I can see that you guys, I'm like live. I've never been disconnected like that and I've got killer signal right now. All right, so we'll get back into the story. Hopefully I didn't lose you too much. It says amongst uh, hundreds are calling for the leaders to be removed, right? Thank you guys. Uh, so things are getting crazy over here, right? We are starting to see um, uh, greater lockdowns over there. They are literally building prisons. Uh, you've probably seen, uh, have you guys seen uh, the pictures of the, or videos of the containers, like the Connex shipping containers. They're building like these massive prisons for people. They're gonna put them in these little cells when they have COVID, right? Um, I So first off, Craig just threw out a super chat. Thank you, Craig. And he says, and I completely agree, and this is where this is going. It's not about uh, the COVID. It's about uh, to hammer the supply chain. So we're gonna get into that. Um, it's absolutely scary what's going on over there. And my heart goes out to the people over there. But it's not about the illness. All right, so let's let's talk about some things right now that have happened in the last couple of years. In the last couple of years, it has been made very clear. Uh, and if you guys agree, please do me a favor and hit the actual thumbs up button in the comment section um, or, or the description of the video, wherever it is. Excuse me, because we have to get the truth out. In the last couple of years, we have all figured out um, that China and Russia have been building a global currency that will rival the dollar, all right? We know that it will absolutely rival and actually I believe destroy the dollar because it is one will be gold backed. Both China and Russia are massive buyers of gold, all right? China has already come out with a gold denominated yuan bond, all right? They have together built a system that is better than the SWIFT code system, the SWIFT system uh, that is used to move money. It's, a, it's essentially, for lack of better terms, a, a high-tech text messaging app. And when I say high-tech, it's actually not because it's from the 60s, but uh, it was way back in the day. China and Russia have developed something called SIPS that is way better, faster, cheaper, much better product, right? China has been going out and railing against the US government policies for a couple of years, and they are building an entire world, new world reserve, uh, currency system through what's called the BRICS initiative, right? That's an acronym that stands for uh, Brazil, China, India, you know, uh, you know, and so on. Sorry, I'm, gone, I'm live, I don't got any notes on me. But it moved way past the BRICS nations. It moved into all these other countries around the world and they started to tie on. In the last couple of years, we've seen strategic alliances that were like 50 year alliances, like the one from Saudi Arabia and Russia completely be broken. And Saudi Arabia signed a military agreement with Russia. And then they vowed their allegiance a month ago to China. All right, I want people to understand that. Thank you so much, Samuel, for the super chat. I want people to understand how insanely big this is, all right? If you think it's big, hit the thumbs up button, all right? We need to be in agreement with things. We wanna get the truth out there. So now, you've seen a couple of times in the last two and a half years where China has gone into uh, lockdown. And what they do is they completely close their ports. And some amazing people around the world have been watching you know, video footage, aerial footage of what they were doing with their ships, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? And they have been preparing for a transformation in the global trade system. And a lot of people would say, well, why would they do that? Why would China do that? If, they, if you're right, Ninja, and they're doing this to destroy the supply chain, because right now, as of right now, we are very, 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 very dependent on China and some other uh, countries uh, for our goods. We are an importer of goods. We are not a producer anymore, all right? So how do you break the backbone of the world's currency system, which is the dollar? Well, you destroy it in a couple of different ways. It's actually a multi-pronged approach. One of those ways is to destroy the things that we need, take, it, take the things that we need away. So we go into panic mode. That would increase our inflation. Another thing that we do, they would do is to start to sell their treasuries. Uh, China has been uh, buyers of treasuries for a long time. Why? Because it's the standard in which they were forced for decades and decades to buy things they need like oil, right? They had to go buy dollars 
to go and buy the oil. Well, now that's gone. So they have a surplus of, of treasuries. So what have they been doing over the last handful of years, 10 years? They've been buying up real estate hand over fist in America. They've been trying to do it quietly. I personally owned a, I was part owner in a real estate brokerage, or that's what we specialized in was selling ag land to funds. So we knew we were on the forefront of watching what Saudi Arabia and China were doing with their money. They were buying up real estate here. It's not just Bill Gates. And so that's another thing they're doing. Now, China announced a month ago uh, when Japan started to falter and say, we got to start selling our treasuries, our U.S. treasuries, just to prop up our currency. China was quick. Two days later said, yeah, we're, we're in the same boat. Our currency's falling too. We need help. We're going to start selling off our treasuries. See, they're using certain uh, light world events as an excuse to destroy the currency of the dollar. And a lot of people go, why would they do that? They're going to destroy theirs. It's called customer acquisition cost. And you have to realize at a certain point, when you become a, cer a certain level of wealth and you're the wealthiest person in the room, you could get away with a lot. You could sacrifice your, have you ever heard that, uh, that uh, sacrifice your rook to take out the queen? That chess term, if I got it right, if I got it wrong, put it in the comment section. But that's what they're doing. Where a lot of people would say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you just throw away that much money, that much power. When they realize, when you just don't realize what they're about to take from you, because when they throw away a certain amount of power or money and they cause another country to start spiraling out of control, then they take what they've got left and go in and buy. That exact same uh, strategy is what I've been trying to teach you guys to get ready for in the real estate market, because banks are wanting to attack your assets through inflation. China and Russia are attacking the United States. So all of these stories right now that are going on all over the world about these protests, and they are historic, and my heart goes out to the people in China. But I'll be honest with you, our country in America was built on the blood and sacrifice of amazing men and women that wanted freedom. And, and that's what it took. Now, the plan that China and Russia have, I believe, are very, very serious, and it needs to be taken very serious. But a lot of people don't understand what to do, how to deal with that information. I saw a comment the other day. It was actually on somebody else's video, and it was about it was a video about somebody that doesn't like. Uh, the idea of owning gold and silver, owning the wealth of kings. They don't like the idea of doing what central banks around the world and billionaires are doing, buying up gold. They said, no, I'm going to go my own way. And, and the person doing this video is actually not wealthy and doesn't own any, which is okay. Um, but trying to tell other people, you know, why you shouldn't when they have no idea. My thing is about let's do what the successful people do, what the countries are trying to take over the countries are doing. Because if they're doing it, uh, on the comment was, um, I just do, the comment to the video is like, I just do what wealthy people and countries that are trying to destroy other countries do. And I can tell you this, if they were buying up cotton balls in mass, I would be buying cotton balls. So since they're buying gold, I'm buying gold. And it was a great comment because it's so true. Why are all the governments buying up cotton? Uh, now, this happened in real time because I knew about all this stuff in 2019 that was coming in 20, well, it actually happened in 2019, but I knew about it actually a couple of years prior, the, uh, the whole event, this flu, right? And so I, would, I was telling my buddies at the fire station, like, we need to start buying up gloves. We need to start buying up masks. We need to start buying, and, and they just laughed at me. They laughed at me. And uh, true story, if any of you guys are on there, just tell them the truth. <laughs> just, and, uh, and, you saw government stockpiling in, in the end of 2019, stockpiling medical equipment. I'm going, do we need to go get this now? We're going to need gloves. We're going to need masks. And for months and months and months, we went on all these emergency calls with no PPE because it was out the door within like one week of calls, emergency calls. All of our gloves, all of our masks were gone. Not all of our gloves, but our masks were gone and gowns and things like that. Um, I have a buddy that started a, he has a factory, he works for, he builds things, movie sets for Disney and Pixar, really successful guy. He turned his entire factory line into building emergency gowns. He made a killing. Why? Because nobody had any, right? Because all the governments were buying them all up. And even inside the government, they couldn't issue them fast enough, right? And so that comment about cotton balls is very important. It's like, if the government, if I find out the government's buying up every cotton ball in the world, I'm gonna start buying cotton balls because I know what's about to happen with the price. And that's exactly what's happening with, with the monetary system right now. 
behind the scenes, the Comex and the Nymex are being drained of their silver, of their platinum. Uh, I, I don't look at what's going on with gold right now, but like it's blowing me away. Countries like Turkey are looking for gold. Guyana, what did they say the other day? They're like, um, we are going to start, uh, uh, as we, they're asking all their mining companies, they're like, we want to buy 20% of all the gold that you produce. We want to buy it because they need it. There's other countries that are coming out and saying we're buying uh, uh, gold with, or oil with gold. I mean, it's so insane. Vinny, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. So what's happening in China right now, you're going you're gonna to get blasted with all this information and there's horrible stuff going on. But I want you to understand that there's these little pockets of like thousands of people, not, not like a million people, right? Not like 100,000 people. You're going to see like 1,000 people, these protests. And this news is going to consume us. It's going to consume uh, the world, right? When in the background, China is playing their, their, their chess game and they are going to have these great excuses. Oh my gosh, look at what's going on right now. We uh, have a falling currency, uh, or we've got to shut down a port and we got to sell more treasuries and we got to stop the ships going to other countries, supplying them of the things that they depend on now. And you may think, but China, that would cause you to crash, crush your businesses. And they, they, they own the, the gold. China for decades has had, a, had a, a policy that no gold goes out of our country. We'd put a little bit of minted coins out to make you feel right, appease you with our gold pandas. But by and large, they say all the gold that's made in this country stays in this country and we'll buy it from you. And you know what's funny? A lot of people don't understand that in China, gold mines are still open. They go, oh, they're just going to nationalize them. Well, they essentially did. They said, we're going to buy it. And, and they also said, we're going to buy it at market price. So keep doing your business. Keep, keep making the gold. We'll buy it. Super simple. You don't even have to go find a buyer. We'll buy it all. We're buying it all. And so they're doing this to, um, Samuel, I'll answer that in a second. Um, they're doing this in order to become the wealthiest nation in the world. And to be honest with you, Russia's in second place. And the reason why is because as of right now, gold is X amount of dollars. But you just saw a country, I want to say it was Denmark. I want to say it was Denmark's uh, either prime minister or central, central bank governor. It was Denmark's central bank governor. That's right, because they were Dutch. The freaky deaky Dutch. Tell me in the comment section what movie that's from. I'm the freaky deaky Dutch. I'm Dutch, I can say that. And we are a little freaky. Um, they, they are sitting there and they said, hey, all we got to do this, this Dutch, you know, central bank governor, all we got to do is if we get into too much trouble, just revalue gold. And it's happened before. As a matter of fact, the last people that revalued gold was America in the thirties. So think about this as of right now, you're saying, um, uh, right now there, are, there are people that are literally in high positions of government going, you know, this thing's all going to crap right now. You know, all we got to do is change the gold price. And then everybody's balance sheets look so much better. And I'm, I want to tell you that there is a day where you're going to see that. And if you don't think history can repeat itself because large governments get themselves into trouble. Now, I don't believe China and Russia are going to do this. You want to know why? Because they're buying it all. Why would they want to revalue it when they're still buying it all as fast as they can, right? India is buying up gold massively, right? As a matter of fact, the news is trying to hit like, oh, look, their gold purchases are way down for October. You're like, okay, copy. They took a break. Have you seen the year's totals? Huge. So none of these countries are going to want to do it. You know who's going to want to do it? The country that's been hiding the numbers out of Fort Knox. They're the ones that are going to do it. Yet the country that actually has a history of revaluing gold when things go to crap. Oh, crap. You know, the last thing uh, the U.S. did with gold is they shut the, the convertibility of the dollar into gold because France was not trusting the gov government in the late 60s, early 70s, and they're buying, they're pulling as much gold out as they can, and Nixon says, I'm going to temporarily halt it. Yeah, how temporary was that? So I want you to understand that all this stuff that's going on behind the scenes, they're trying to, to actually cause the price of uh, gold to actually stay the same or go down a little bit and trying to buy it. The problem is the premiums are skyrocketing. Even on investable, uh, not investment grade, but uh, actual, we're talking like large bars. The actual premiums are rising. Countries see this. So um, someone asked if, I sh if you should buy gold. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I always ask people uh, two questions. Do you believe the stock market is at an all-time high? Or do you think we're going to see weakness in, over the long term? Do you think we're at the top? And then the other question is, uh, do you want to do what wealthy people do? I mean, and I'm not talking about putting it all into it. 
Um, I saw somebody uh, the other day talking about uh, Jack made up a really great point. He said, you know, people with, you know, uh, people with large net worths throughout history, financial advisors, which honestly these days aren't worth too much in investment advice because they only sell you their company's prepackaged goods. Okay. I want you to understand that. That's literally how it works these days. There's very few independent investment advisors out there now. Um, a lot of them, you go to their, their bank, you talk to them, they want to sell you their stuff. And very few investment advisors will talk to you about owning physical precious metals because they don't make any money from it. All right. But, you know, since like, let's say early 2000s back, you know, 40 years, investment advisors always would tell you that you should own 10% of your net worth in gold. And the reason why is because of uncertainty. It's literally, it's not an investment. It is an insurance policy against uncertain times. That is it. It's an insurance policy. So investment advisors would suggest that 10%. Now I saw Jack come on Chris Taylor's uh, channel the other day and he made a very good point. He said, you know, you have a net worth of a million dollars. You have a million dollars in it in assets, you know, to, to hold 10%, maybe 20%. I, I want to say he said, maybe it was just 10 is, is, commendable. It's what we've all been taught to do, right? Um, but the problem is if you're just making, if you're just making $100,000 or less, and I mean that, this is not everybody makes $100,000, six figures, right? $100,000 or less right now, and you have a family to support, you honestly probably are just scraping by. And that is the truth. You know, uh, my firefighting job makes a little over a hundred, but at a hundred thousand dollars pre-tax in California with a mortgage, right? And no other debt, I look back and go, man, if I didn't have the businesses that I have, the side hustles that I have, I would be just scraping by. Right now with the inflation rate, I would just be scraping by. I mean, I filled up this Kia the other day and it cost me literally $90 to fill up a Kia. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Now, I love my car, but it's like, you start looking at this and I, thank heavens I've got businesses. I've run businesses for well, 20 years and uh, on top of my job. But he was absolutely right. He goes, so that that's a scenario where you shouldn't be buying any. And if you do, maybe, and I'm putting words in his mouth now, buy a coin here and there of silver. And he was 100% right. And then I want to explain something else too, because this is what China's doing. They want lower gold prices. They want it. Problem is there's so many other countries vying for this metal right now. It's hard to push out a narrative that's going to push the price down. Um, in 2020, the stock markets crashed. I mean, we're talking like a flash crash, right? About, I don't know, two weeks long, just whoo, straight down. And the paper price of gold and silver also collapsed. But here's the problem. I was talking with Sean uh, Kun Kun uh, the other day, and he was saying, he's like, yeah, I bought a hand over fist in March of 2020. But the problem was when the paper price of silver was sitting at 11 bucks, or sorry, it was sitting at like uh, uh, 13 bucks. He's all, I was paying 18 something for the coins because of the price of our spot because everybody was diving in. It was, it was so fast. And I've seen this multiple times in the past uh, 10 years investing in the bullion markets. So the problem is, is these countries want sharp lower prices, but the, the pressure right now, the buying pressure is immense. The delivery delays are insane. And so we're going to see more news like this of these lockdowns, these shutdowns, these protests. But what you have to look at is what the countries behind the scenes want. What, what are their desires? What are they doing? China wants a new reserve currency. Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve chairman, said, I see soon a day where the U.S. dollar is not the only reserve currency. He said that right in front of Congress. And people acted shocked. But they know the writings on the wall. China and government want a regime change when it comes to monetary policy around the world. And so they're going to do everything they can to get that going. And changing a narrative, causing fear, causing supply chain and delays, uh, supply chain breaking and delays, are, are that mode of transportation that they're going to use. All right? So the question is, and again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial professional. I make money. That's what I do. I like to make money. My goal is to be a billionaire. Regardless if you like that idea or not, sorry, it's just a goal I got. Financial advisors these days are trained to sell you their financial assets. All right. 
um, they're not in it for, it, they're like real estate agents. They only make money if you buy or sell something to them. That's it. So think about the, uh, the motivation for a, oh, what's it called? A financial advisor to sell you on gold and silver, physical gold and silver. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that I'm just going to keep doing what countries, successful countries are doing. Now, the other thing is, is I was asked this question earlier today. Do you really think that China is that scared of the sickness? And I'm going to be honest with you. I do not think they're that scared. And the reason why I, I think they're using this as an excuse because there's so much, uh, proof all around the world that it, this isn't what it was perpetrated to be, but governments made this out to be something very big to put us in the hurt like locker financially. They wanted two things. They wanted the ability to print money like crazy, just like they did in 1918. Spanish flu came out. The federal was, there was a depression, a, a short lived depression. Look at it similar to what happened in March of 2020, but a little bit longer. Then the federal reserve came in and started printing money like crazy, lowered interest rates and, and the stimulus was on. And for the greater part of a decade, we had what's called the roaring twenties. And in that amount of time, a lot of people were dancing and drinking champagne and you saw that kind of stuff and throwing glasses down the ground and breaking them and, and enjoying life. But what I want you to understand is that people were uh, living it up while the Federal Reserve was printing money and their bank buddies were up buying assets like crazy, getting ready, getting ready. And they're, they're building up their cash asset, uh, sort of their cash allocation. And then when the depression started, which they knew was coming, they bought up assets, pennies on the dollar from all those people that were dancing in the streets during the roaring twenties, thinking life was great. They were investing in the stock market. It was going up. Everybody was rich until they weren't. And that's the plan. The U S has that plan, but China and Russia also had that plan too. And in the midst of that plan, the U S just wants to buy up our assets. China wants to buy up China and Russia. They want to buy up the world's assets. Now think about that. Now, when I talk about how important it is to be ready for this, to jump when it's time to jump, to go in, and it will be a scary thing. I am so excited. It's like just ugh, bated breath to jump into the real estate market when it's pennies on the dollar, right? But the thing is, it will be like catching a falling knife. You don't know when the bottom will come in, right? You don't know when the, the, the Federal Reserve will, will drop rates to a certain point and then we've got that base, that bottom, right? So there's ways and that's what I'm excited to show people is how to layer in, in certain types of real estate to get multiple pieces. You don't just buy one, uh, but then also to, to take that real estate, that opportunity from the banks because they're gonna be trying to buy it. And the scary thing is, the sad thing is, is right now, you know what they're using to buy up the real estate from you guys? Is your pension money. It's your pension money they're using. And they're gonna control it. And that is egregious to me. They are going to use your money to buy your house. If that doesn't piss you off, and then at the same time, get you excited and grit your teeth and we're gonna get it, we're gonna get it. We're going for it. All of us together. All of us. If that doesn't fire you up, you need to stop watching this channel. Because I will continue to prep people and get people pumped and, and show both sides of the story. Because if you aren't ready for this, you've wasted a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I want people to understand this. Stop looking 30 days ahead. If you're looking 30 days ahead or even six months ahead and you're not looking multi-year ahead, you are small-minded and I hope that insults you enough to shake you and then prove me wrong because I'm telling you right now, China and Russia, they play long games. Just so you know, they both ruled the world before and yet we mock them like they're morons. Who's the moron? The mocker. The mocker is always the fool. A wise man listens. A mocker talks. We need to be listening and watching what these countries are doing right now. Because right now, CNN's blasting this out. Look at the protests, human rights, oh my gosh. Google China and gold right now and hit news articles. Google China and the US dollar, hit news articles. Hit chi Google China and Russia hit news articles and watch. Watch what they're doing with their monetary policy. Because just so you know, the only way that you run the world, the only way that you become the savior of the world or the Satan of the world is by being the richest. Kings knew this, 
Monarchs knew this, lords knew this because they controlled all of the serfs during medieval times. Sorry, I gotta have some coffee. I'm not fired up enough. Are you guys fired up enough? You know, it's funny. I've had this, the chat thing off this whole time. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's all right. Now I don't have any scroll mode. Squirrel. If you aren't fired up right now by this, I don't know what, what, what it's going to take. By the way, to everybody in Canada, I'm going to be in uh, Cambridge House speaking uh, VRIC end of January. Go take a look at it. Just Google Cambridge House VRIC. You'll see my crazy mug on the front um, with a bunch of amazing speakers. It's free. You need to be going and getting around like-minded people and getting pumped up right now. Don't look one month. Don't look three months ahead. Look six months. Look a couple of years ahead and start planning for that. Because if you're prepared for the day it happens, and it won't be one day, but it will feel like it happened overnight. I was getting ready for 2008 back in 2006. And I'm telling you right now to watch people's amazement like this just smacked him in the face when Lehman Brothers closed their doors. Oh my gosh, it just happened in a day. I just got laid off because it happened. No, it didn't. It happened two years prior. And it was so easy to spot. And right now the world's economies are collapsing. And the US dollar and the British pound are headlining that. And you know what's crazy? You know what blows me away? People have no freaking concept because of a stupid index called the Dixie. Boy, isn't that an interesting name? Shows, oh, the dollar's strong against all these crap currencies. Yeah, because they're devaluing this stuff. They're buying all the gold from everybody around that's stupid enough to sell it. Sorry, Canada. Canada sold all their gold. They were proud of it. Guys, if you're from Canada right now, do me a favor and let me know what you think about your government selling all of its gold. Today, a story came out, and I'm doing, I did an interview uh, this morning with um, uh, the CEO of a large gold company and uh, about it. The, the Yahoo is all of a sudden saying, just so you guys know, there's lots of gold in Fort Knox in case anything goes bad. Like, why are you reminding us? Is there something going on? Is there, is there smoke in the kitchen? Should I be opening up the oven and seeing if there's fire? Why, why all of a sudden we, well, yeah, cool, copy. There's gold in Fort Knox. It's really interesting to see these news articles and what's being shown to you right now in the front line. Like, oh, it's about the COVID lockdowns. Nah, no, I think that's the greatest excuse in the world. I think right now you're seeing the mask coming off. And I hope to be able to show you a different side of things. Um, you know, I have buddies that uh, bought some silver a while back and they bought it like at 24 bucks, 25 bucks. And they're like, oh, look, my silver's down. I'm like, are you an idiot? And they look at me all snap too real quick. I'm like, are you, are you, are you not that bright? Well, you're going to whine that you lost a few bucks and silver. Yeah. Look at the silver price. I'm like, okay. Well, so I obviously haven't tried to buy any lately. No. What does that have to do with it? Well, why don't you just pretend to go buy an ounce right now and call me back in about five minutes. They call back like, what the heck happened to the price of silver? Yeah. It's weird when you actually try and buy it, huh? See, because you're being lied to on the stock exchanges. They're like, it's worth nothing. There's nothing to see here. Behind you is a burning building right now. There's nothing to see here. You know, they said the same thing about Lehman Brothers in June. There's no problems in Lehman Brothers. No problems. <laughs> this is like tried and true. The second the government comes out and goes, there's no problems. There's problems. That's actually how it works. And what's crazy to me is that people buy it. Well, they're the same people that watch Jim Cramer, you know, because that idiot's just bobblehead. Bye, 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 bye. Cool. But, you know, my point being is that are you, are you choosing to be a sheep or are you choosing to be a lion when it comes to finance? We need lions. We need uh, those that will stand in strength. You look at a lion. Think about this. You just look at a lion and it hasn't made a sound. And you're like, that is one bad ass animal. If that thing looks me in the eyes, I fear for my life. I was once about 50 feet, 60 feet from a lion and he was standing up and he was just looking at the crowd and it was at a zoo and the, all the female lions were, were around him and he's just standing there just like, oh man, like, and you know, and he looks at the crowd and all of a sudden he doesn't roar. He, something came from inside of him and it was like this low rumble and I'm not kidding. I could feel it. I could feel it. It was the most, it was this low rumbling roar but it wasn't a loud one. His mouth was barely opened and uh, it was insane. And that's where we have to be. And that's where these countries are going to be when they are holding the gold, when everything else is going to crap. Europe right now, 
or no, not right now, a couple years ago, they were calling for a second Bretton Woods, which means they want to see world governments uh, back their currencies in some type of commodity. <laughs> this is a couple years ago. Gold is much lower than it is now. You know, everyone keeps looking at it like, oh, gold's off its highs. It was 2000. No, why don't you look at like three or four years ago when it was 1500 bucks? How, how's that done on a percentage basis versus currencies? Well, the Dixie's up. I don't give a crap about the Dixie. The DXY is a moronic indicator of the value of the dollar. And the only reason it's up right now is because the Federal Reserve is like spike rate, spike rate, spike rates. Just keep going, keep going. We gotta get, we gotta, we gotta lie to everybody. And in the meantime, people are like, well, now I can't afford a house. Now I can't afford a new car. Now I can't afford fuel because, because interest rates going up and everything's going up. My credit card debt's going up. So is it worth it? Nope, it's not. But it's planned. See, the Federal Reserve actually knows what they're gonna do. And they're just gonna look at you and go like, let's all go back to our economics books. You know, that we went, we went to high school with, you know, the ones that we paid to tear pages out of, to tell you the reality of money printing and what it does. So you can't figure it out. And so right now is the greatest opportunity in my, in my life, I believe. And I bought, I bought silver at 50 bucks. Do my whining about it? I still got it. What? Nope. Because I got super pumped when it was at 14, even at 18. I mean, silver under 30 to me is a gift. But hey, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a dude with a bro hawk, a dream, a cup of coffee, which I need more of. So my thing is, is challenge the status quo. The status quo is none of your friends know what an ounce of silver uh, is worth. None of your friends know the value of silver and what the patents are, how important it is. They don't understand. Shoot, you got people, because I call it God's money. Because I believe in God. I believe God created gold and silver. I, create, I believe he put it in the ground and said, okay, here you go. As fast as you dig it up, your monetary supply can grow, uh, but inflation will grow with it. That's great. Satan we weasels way in and started printing notes on papyrus back when Jesus was on earth. I'm not here to preach to you. These are just facts. Um, you know, and, and they took the value of, of everything away and they started to inflate it, bankers. And so none of your friends know the value of it. They don't, you got people running around church being holier than now. They don't even know what God's money is. And my thing is, is take advantage of that. Learn about something that nobody else cares about and nobody else wants to know about it. Buy it when it's cheap and sell it to all of them when they're panicking, freaking out. That's what I'm planning on doing. Guys, if you want to see me speak, I'm going to be up in uh, VRIC at Cambridge House. I can't wait to see you. The uh, event's free. I mean, there's like Robert Kiyosaki, Rick Rule. Um, there's all so many amazing speakers going to be there. It's going to be free in Vancouver, end of January. I hope to see you guys there. Hope you have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.